I wanted to briefly talk about the video Purism posted last night. The video is just one and a half images, but the images say a lot. First off, this seems to be a rendering of what the phone will look like. But more importantly, the top overlay implies that they have completed the hardware schematic for the Librem 5 phone. Plus, the video still says shipping Q3, which gives them more or less three months to start shipping. I personally wouldn't be sad if they delayed, but I'm crazy excited for the device, so if it does ship soon, awesome. If not, I think people will be happy if it ships this year, period. <laughs> Shifting gears a little bit. So looking back at 2017, some of the early articles that got me excited for the dev kit said that it would be able to run a variety of different distributions. As everybody knows, OpenSUSE is the shiny green star of Linux distros. It has the best battery performance and the coolest package manager. Oh no, swiper no swiping. <sighs> Okay, it's pronounced Zipper, but I had a customer once call it that back when I did SUSE Linux support at Novell, so... It's not hard to tell that I prefer OpenSUSE. It's not that I don't like Debian. In fact, I would say Debian is my second favorite distro. PROS being Debian-based is actually a good thing in my eyes. That doesn't mean, though, that I don't want to see OpenSUSE running on the Librem 5. First off, this is a prime example of hacking shit together. This is not a way to start an official port of OpenSUSE. Step one, solder some shit to your dev board. Big shout out to my roommate. Thank you for doing the soldering for me. You only need to solder RX, TX, and ground. Next, we flash the dev kit with whatever the latest image is, but including the options dash dash dir and dash dash skip cleanup. This leaves behind the dev kit dot image file. Next, go to OpenSUSE's website and download the latest ARM64 build of Tumbleweed. I went with the Just Enough OS root file system. Then we mount our dev kit image. Mount the second partition on the dev kit image. CD to our mount point. Delete all the Debian shit that we're not going to need anymore. Then we can extract our OpenSUSE tar file directly to MT. Next, we just flash that modified devkit.image. Then we can use picocom to attach that serial device we soldered on. This is pretty cool. We can see the boot up messages. As you can see, not all of the services start up well. It does get stuck on the network. But do note, my dev kit has a broken Ethernet port, so that could be the issue here. It eventually did reach the login screen, and I was able to log in. After I entered the password, it kind of just sat there, looking foolish for a second. Kind of freaked me out the first time. I was like, oh crap, what's not working? <laughs> but it did log in eventually, and I did get a prompt. Here's OpenSUSE Tumbleweed running on the Librem 5 dev kit. It's using the PureOS kernel, but it has the root file system of SUSE. Uh, one of the things to note was the root file system was read-only, which was a simple fix. After remounting the root file system, YAST opens up fine. The partitioner opens up, and you can look around your disks. Here's a quick look at the services manager. A lot of stuff is dead, but that's to be expected with this kind of hack job. Okay, back to PureOS. I managed to compile and run the powder toy. This is a classic falling sand game, but with an absolute crap load of options and materials. After loading it up, it's obvious that the resolution is weird. I start it with scale 2 just so I can access the menus a little bit better. Unfortunately, a lot of the screen is cut off doing it this way. I thought about changing the resolution in the code, but that would result in none of the online levels loading. Before anybody complains that it's slow, do note that this is running over X forwarding via a USB-C cable, so I don't see Android doing that anytime soon. Or ever. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.